welcome back to Revolving Culture. We're glad to have you join us again this week. We are the podcast that takes a look at popular culture and all of its myriad facets. Uh, this being October, of course, this episode is all about Halloween. We're capping off October with just a look at Halloween in general and sort of the, the various different ways that it's impacted our culture. Uh, as always, I am one of your hosts, Marty. I'm Robbie. And I'm Andrew. I'm Jeremy. <clears throat> and I'm Vicky. And we are so glad to have you back with us. We hope you've enjoyed this month of our conversations about the the sort of the scary, the creepy, the spooky, and whatever else is in that Adams Family song. Uh, we are looking at just Halloween in general uh, this this week. We're um, it's it's a holiday that that has. I suppose evolved is the best word for it. I mean, it, it's just a, even in my lifetime, it's gone through all, a huge amount of change uh, between kind of how it was celebrated in the, the 19, just even the 1980s to, to how it's celebrated or not celebrated, depending on your, your particular point of view uh, here in the 2000s. Um, but it is, a, it is a holiday that's been around for, for a long time. Did you guys said you uh, had looked? We have some stuff on the kind of the history of Halloween. Yes, um, Halloween kind of evolved from a number of traditions that were around in basically ancient times. Uh, there was one tra- uh, one holiday that the Romans celebrated called Lemuria, which was uh, a celebration of the dead, and it happened around. It was May or March, March thirteenth, I believe. Mm-hmm. No, May thirteenth. Yeah. It was May thirteenth, and um, the Christian, uh, the Christian faith co-opted it and had held the all. Had, I'm sorry, held All Saints Day on the exact same day on May thirteenth. It did so well amongst uh, the people that they decided to move it to uh, October thirty. No, November 1st, sorry. This is going to be full of <laughs> of edits. Uh, November 1st was All Saints Day. And then uh, Halloween was born because of uh, the pagan holiday or Gaelic holiday, uh, Samhain, Samhain mm-hmm. which is pronounced uh, Samhain, but spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N, which looks like Samhain, um, which uh, and the Gaelic festival celebrated once again uh, the turning of the year. It was a change in the weather as well as a shift in everybody's lives. Uh, the the Celts believe this magical time opened up a sort of connection to the dead. Those souls that had passed through the ultimate turning point, the shift from life to death. Uh, they believe the world of the living was closest to the world of the dead at the time of Samhain and that the spirits of the dead traveled again among the living. Um, the activities that were performed during the festival have almost all carried through to today, uh, to Halloween. And Halloween is kind of an, uh, a bastardization of All Hallows' Evening. It started off as All Hallows' Evening and then was shortened to Hallows' Even and then finally Hallows' uh, sorry, Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that's the basic early history of it and it kind of evolved through the times um one of the things that i learned while researching was uh one of the practices of all souls day was to make these soul cakes they were like simple bread desserts with currant topping like a fruit topping and the kids would go to door to door begging for the cakes but the begging didn't stop there um while people were celebrating the festival, uh, people who were not of much money or anything like, or didn't have much money or anything like that, would go to door to door. Also, and because they were of lesser class and not intelligent, what's the word? Educated. Yeah, non-educated type of people. A lot of people were non-educated in those days. Yeah, um, but they. Well, it was, I mean, it's kind of those roots are where you can see the sort of things that, that we're, um, you know, that we were 
that we celebrate uh, the 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 treats being handed out door to door, things like that. I mean, like like so many things in our culture, it the 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 ghost of centuries past is is within the sort of modern tradition. I think it, what Andrew was saying was um, it was a tradition that started off with kids and. I guess the older kids and some adults wanted to get on it. So like in the spirit, they would kind of wear masks or disguise themselves and ask for these treats as well. Is that where you're getting with that? But also with the trick or treating tradition, it started because these people who were from lesser backgrounds would also go door to door, and if they were, they were all drunk and having you know parties and having a good time, Just like and poor if they people. yeah, and if they weren't <laughs> <laughs> if they weren't appeased, if you you know you don't give them their treat, they would then like vandalize your home, do awful things to the place that you live and the cities that they they inhabited, uh, and that's kind of the the early stages of trick or treating. Since they were all poor. And, uh, you know, without luxury that other people had, uh, they were, they probably didn't bathe much. They were maybe a little stinky. They didn't have any much food. So they would go door to door and say, trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's where that came from. That's so tough. But one of the things that I was probably my favorite story of of that sort of early mythology of Halloween, uh, and you came across it in in your research, Andrew, was the uh, the story of the jack o' lantern. Yeah, uh, jack o' lanterns, uh, an Irish le- legend that says that jack o' lanterns are named for a man called Jack, <laughs> who could not go to heaven or hell and was forced to walk the earth forever with a, only a coat from hell to light his lantern, a coal from hell to light his lantern. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, the name Jack O' Lantern can be der- also be derived from the night watchman who would light the street lanterns every evening. Uh, originally, Jack O' Lanterns were made with uh, turnips. It wasn't until uh, the tradition tradition yeah came to America that we started using pumpkins, which were a much better vessel for Jack O' Lanterns. Um, Plus, you can make a pie out of them. A yeah, turnip pie just doesn't sound all that intriguing pie. to me. And you can roast the uh, the seeds. Yeah, yeah. So I did not realize that it, it, it's something that you came across was that that Halloween gets here by Ireland and Scotland. Yes, sir. <laughs> Just a thought. Every year by boat it comes. <laughs> Halloween comes. Uh, it, it winters here in America yeah. and then makes its way back to Europe. Well, because the because of it being uh, a pagan tradition, yeah, and you know the the, Mo- the like Celtic most, people, like most holidays, yeah, and because of the Celtic people were so strongly involved, naturally it, it comes from those areas. Yeah, it's it's weird because I would have, I, I mean, for for whatever reason in my head, I always had it that it was coming from the the German Celts. So it was interesting to to learn that it's it really came more out of out of my people in Scotland and Ireland, and and I mean it's it's had a complicated history. I think I think there's no denying that. Um, it, it seems like lately it it sort of bears the cross of its history uh, as as it just almost seems like fewer and fewer people people excuse me celebrate it. Um. Modern Halloween just uh, am I the only one that kind of feels like it's it's sort of morphing away from trick or treating and more uh, towards you know the everybody's just having how you know costume parties it's more of it seems almost more of an adult holiday maybe that's just my perception I think. yeah that sounds like yeah. confirmation bias to me of just what our own experience you know it yeah. feels like as adults the you get you know, the more especially adults without to. children you know <laughs> yeah, and it may be just that i don't see you know in, in in all fairness i don't get to celebrate a lot of halloween so maybe it's just it's my my perception feels that way because i never see trick-or-treaters oh, i see yeah i think halloween will always be around for kids like it Kids will always go out and trick or treat and have their fun early in the evening, but now it's become even more of an, a, an adult activity. And yeah, I think a long, long time ago it was intended for children, 
and only children celebrated it. But as time went on, it became a family event and it you know, included all all adults and children of all ages and whatnot. <clears throat> we could talk a little bit about haunted houses. And I mean, because that, that gets kids and adults together. And, and that is a that is an evolution of the last ten or fifteen years that has really exploded. Is is the evolution of the haunted house where before it was more it was something that churches or you know rec centers would do for kids something fairly now it's a a three hundred and sixty five day a year business for some people I mean they they sink you know hundreds of thousands of dollars into turning a property into a haunted house. Year round. Yeah, it's a much more commercial idea now. Yeah, yeah. I think there's. And, a... and you have your pick of there's thirty different haunted houses in any one particular location. And a lot like of it... theme. Oh. No, go ahead. Uh, a lot of theme parks will. Uh, a lot of places transform themselves into haunted attractions. Um, Six Flags and Fright Fest and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and, and it's isn't it when like it seems like because by the time Halloween rolls around, a, a lot of these theme parks generally have shut down for the season. Uh, it seems like oftentimes, in, in depending on your location geographically, uh, you know, by early September, but then they they sort of open back up during the Halloween mm-hmm. season as kind of a provisional, maybe only on weekends. But it, it's it's sort of your one last little hurrah before winter really sets in in the theme park business. Yeah, in our last episode, we talked about how horror movies have become their own little niche in in popular culture, and the same can be said for haunted houses and Halloween. You know, at large, uh, haunted houses specifically. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but there's a. a documentary called the american scream which was released in 2012 about um a group of uh, their rival their friend it's a friendly rivalry somewhere in new jersey i believe um it's this small neighborhood where everyone well there's like there's probably like four or five houses who have dedicated most of the year to churning out the best haunted house and it, they've spent tens of thousands of dollars on on effects, on uh, pro, you know props, and mm-hmm. um, they've hired people from within the community to come and help out. And it's just become this like source of pride for them. Um, but it's also scary as hell. I mean, yeah. uh, these people yeah. are really dedicated to this weird art form for lack of a better word. But. Well, I mean, it, and it even kind of goes the other direction in a way because uh, here in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, I, I mean, we're we're center stage in Cedar Hill, Texas for, for Hell House, which is a sort of a haunted house coming from the other direction. It is, it is not the horrors of the spooky and the supernatural. It is the perceived horrors of the... The, the world that we live in in modern day and the excesses thereof. Yeah. How, uh, how n- normal life can, can be horrific in, in the eyes of these people at the church who want to scare you by showing you abhorrent things. And, it, and, and if you haven't seen it, there is a, there is a pretty snappy little documentary called Hell House uh, that, that's worth a look if you've never seen it. it it's quite a a look at what goes into making that uh, that particular haunted house every year, for lack of a better name. I think it's important that we look at the fact that you said these people. It, it's not. It's definitely not for everybody. Uh, yeah, it is. It is a very specific audience that it is is kind of catering to. Yeah, it's the God fearing, the right wing, God fearing, God fearing, uber conservative. <laughs> The, 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 the people who are traditionally nowadays not celebrating Halloween, which is also an interesting dichotomy. Although not I would like all to go right check wingers one out, are. 